click on the subscribe button, and press the bell icon, to never miss any updates. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله الذي هدانا إلى الملة الحنفية السمحة السهلة البيضاء وبين لنا طلب الشريعة والحقيقة بواسطة سيدنا محمد الذي ختم به الأنبياء وأصحابه الذين هم نجوم الإقتداء والإهتداء وأنباعه البرة الأتقياء من العلماء المحدثين والفقهاء صلى الله تعالى عليهم ما دامت الأرض والسماء أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا وأهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجارة عليها ملائكة غلاظ ملائكة غلاظ شداد لا يعصون الله لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سبعة يظلهم الله في ظله يوم لا ظل إلا ظله ومنهم شاب نشأ في عبادة الله Mashallah, I see very young faces and I see the stars and the light of our future. Every one of you is a star and a torch barrier and a leader for every single person in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you. When it comes to Islamic values, Islamic religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses every individual to hold on to the torch and be the leader. So you might be small now, you might not understand. But inshallah, because of this masjid, because of this institution, because of the knowledge that you will gain and seek from this institution, inshallah you will see the benefits in your life and you will for sure see the benefit in the hereafter. There are millions and millions of Muslims outside, right? Yes. So many of your friends are in public school. And if you ask them to recite the kalima, they cannot recite the kalima properly. Right? They cannot say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah correctly and properly. Right? And the main purpose of this masjid and institution is that how can every one of you enter Jannah? That is the main goal. The main goal is that how you and you and every one of you can enter Jannah. The whole purpose of this institution is how they can guide you and lead you to the straight path and direct you to, the, to your destination. Everyone over here, all the kids, you guys want to play and joke around and be happy and never have to do homework, right? Yes. That's what you guys want, right? Yes. No homework, nothing. You just want to play, play games forever, no. eat no. food forever, and have the best candies and best food ever, right? No. Yeah, right? Yes. There's only one place who will get that. <laughs> Even in this world, if I give you a game, right? After you play it for one week, two weeks, you get bored, okay. right? You're on another game. You want the most recent game that came out. Or if your mom cooks you biryani, you eat it for two, three days, after three days, like, I don't want it anymore. It tastes bad. You get bored of it. Right? But in Jannah, it never gets bad. In Jannah, it never gets bad. If you taste one lollipop, and you're like, oh my god, it tastes so good. And if you taste it again, it's going to taste better than the first time. And if you taste it again, it's going to taste better than the first and the second time. 
And if you, if you play a game, you play it the second time, it's going to get better and better and better. And that's what we want, right? We want something that lasts forever and gets better time by time. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ In Jannah, you will get whatever you want. Whatever you want. There is no restriction, there is no limit. It's not like, oh, you go to your mom, your mom has a bag of candy, she gives you five, and tomorrow you come, the next day you come back, like, can I get a lollipop? No, it's finished. I have to go buy more. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you ask Him, He gets more happy. If you don't ask Him, He gets angry. The more you ask Him, the happier Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets. And even those things you cannot ask for, those things you don't have in your head, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will even give that. وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيد Even those things you don't know what they are, Allah will give you extra and more. Understand? So the whole purpose of this masjid and institution that you are honored to be in. Right? The whole purpose is for you to enter where? where? Jannah. Go where? Jannah. Jannah. That is the main purpose. Right? And the way to enter Jannah is to follow this book. Which book? Yes. This book. This is our guide. This is our manual. And if you want to build something, you have to follow the instruction, right? You know, sometimes your parents bring some sofas and furniture in the house. They, they, they take out the instructions, right? And they say, follow step one, step two, do like this. You know, put a nail here and the screwdriver here. And then you make a sofa and a bed, right? Same way, if you want to live a good life, if you want to be a proper human being, and if you want to enter Jannah, you have to follow? The Quran. The Quran. This is why in the, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الله سبحانه وتعالى introduces himself with the name الرحمن the most merciful, the most compassionate he's so compassionate and merciful even though we disobey him even though we don't listen to him, even though the non-Muslims, they curse him, they talk bad against him, even then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them food, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them water, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets them breathe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects them from sickness. Wouldn't it be crazy and hard if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished us for every time we did a sin? Imagine every time we spoke against our parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished us. Or we lost the power of, a, of one of our eyes, or we can't speak anymore, or our feet start hurting, or you know, we can't walk anymore. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful, even though we disobey Him, even though we don't listen to Him, He still gives us food, He still gives us water, He still gives us whatever we want. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, from amongst His greatest mercy is what? Allam al Quran. The greatest mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is the Qur'an. Without Qur'an, we are nothing. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the third verse, خَلَقَ insan. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am the most merciful, the most compassionate. And He says, He is the one who taught the Qur'an. And then He says, He is the one who created humankind. He is the one who created you. But don't we come first? Doesn't the book come later and then the students? When you go to a class, right? The book can only be taught if there are students, right? Yeah. Right? How come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the Quran first and then humankind? Because you cannot be a true human being unless and until you follow the Quran. Quran. Right? Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said there are two types of creation. How many types of creation? Two. Two types. The first type are the angels. The angels, they don't have any desires. The angels do not eat like, like we eat, right? Every day, almost three times a day we eat, right? We eat kebab and french fries and burgers and all these things. We eat and eat and eat. 
And sometimes we eat more than what we need to and become fat. Right? The angels don't need to eat. The angels don't need to sleep. The angels don't need to get married. Nothing. So those are the angels. They have no desires. But they only have one purpose. What is that purpose? To serve Allah. To worship Allah and serve Allah. And then you have the other creation, which are the animals. The animals, Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah says, they have no purpose. Do they worship Allah like the way we do? No. Like the way the angels do? No. But they have desires. Animals only have desires. They eat, drink, and sleep. That's it. So in the middle is us. We have desires, but we also have a purpose. Now we have to ask ourselves. If we are you know, fulfilling our desires and running after our desires, then we become like that? Animals. And if we go after our purpose, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we become like an angel. angel. Understand? So our life, everything we do, we have to ask ourselves. Am I fulfilling my desires without any reason to become like an animal? Or am I becoming like an angel? Am I trying to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes. The jinns are also like human beings. The jinns also have desires and they also have a purpose. Understand? And you guys are the youngsters. You guys have the toughest. Because old Babaji, which is 67 years old, he's too old to run around and have fun. Your grandfather, he's too old to go watch a movie in the theater. He's too old to run around and fight and curse. And But you guys have the energy, don't you? Yeah. You have the energy to run and talk and laugh and do whatever you want. So at this age, if you guys decide not to follow your evil desires, instead use the energy to worship Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you a lot. This is why on the Day of Judgment, right? On the Day of Judgment, the sun will be a mile away. You know the sun is like a millions of miles away now? And even then, in the summer, because how the solar system works, how the earth revolves around the, earth, the sun, and how the equinoxes and everything works, because of one or two centimeters, the Fahrenheit goes so high, right? Because 90 degrees and everyone is sweating, you know, taking their clothes off and everything. Imagine if it was a mile away. The sun will be, will be a mile away and people will be sweating so much that some of the people, because of their sins, the sweat will be onto their ankles and some of them, the sweat will be onto their you know, thighs and their uh, chest and their nose. So on that day, if you want to be the chosen one and if you want to be protected from the punishment of Allah and the heat of the sun, then you have to be one of those seven people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that on the day of judgment they will be under the shade of Allah, under the shade of the arsh of Allah. And you know one of those people who, who they will be? Prophet said what? There are seven people, right? On the day of judgment when the sun will be so close and everyone will be going crazy and running around. And that day there are seven people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will favor them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect them from that punishment. And one of them is Shabu Nasha'afi Ibadatillah. Is those youth like you guys who are young, who have energy to do bad. And instead, if you guys use your young age to worship Allah, then on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let, will let you be under that arsh, under his throne. And you'll be protected from the heat and you'll be chilling under his throne. And you'll be chilling. You'll be calm and chilling, you know? But you have to utilize the youth, the energy that you have when you're young for worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, this masjid and this institution are taking the initiative to make you guys like that. Understand? Yes. They are taking the initiative, they are taking the steps in how to make you successful as a human being, as a secular person, and also as a sacred person. Inshallah, when the institution starts, you guys will be taught your math, English, science, history. It's also important. These four subjects are very important. Understand? 
But you, if, if you have, if you know math, if you know English and science and history, this will empower you as an American citizen, but it will also empower you as a Muslim. So when you stand up and you talk to non-Muslims and you want to give a speech, you know what you're talking about. You understand? The main thing is two things you have to have balance, right? There's some people, they only do secular education. And there's some people, they only do sacred education. In this country, we need both. We need if you want to represent Islam, if you want to revive Islam, every one of you needs to be educated, balanced and educated in your secular, meaning your math, English, science, history, and also in your sacred knowledge. Understand? I don't know what the plan is, but inshallah, I myself and one of my friends, we also started an Islamic school in Brooklyn. And our vision and mission is what? How can every student have a balanced education? Until 12th grade. From 9th, basically from 1st to 8th grade, to learn the basic Islamic <coughs> knowledge. But at the same time, you guys will follow the New York State curriculum. Understand? You will follow and you will follow the guidelines, the subjects they need to study, right? And then you will take your New York State uh, citywide test. So you're not missing out on anything. The same test. Your friends will take it in public school, you'll also take it when you're here. Understand? But you're getting double double the benefits. You're getting you're getting the secular education, but you're also learning the Quran. You're also learning the hadith of the Prophet. You're protecting yourself from the outside environment. Understand? And if you look at the facts, and inshallah you'll be under the homeschooling system. Understand? If you look at the facts for homeschooling, there, there are about 2.3 million students in America who are under the homeschooling system. And they do better, 13 to 30 percentile better than those kids who are in public school. Imagine. Because you have the ability to make your own curriculum. You're not wasting your time in music class and dancing class and this class and that class which you don't need. You're going to utilize every second and every hour on good things, on things which are important. So when you are under a homeschooling system, you can make your own curriculum. You can make your own hours. Understand? And that way you will not miss out. And you will be protected. That's, it's called NHERI, right? It's called National Homeschooling Research Institute. If you look it up, they'll tell you all the facts. They'll tell you all the facts and all the benefits the homeschooling system has. Understand? In this way, you'll be able to protect your faith. And today we know what's going on in public schools, right? In public school you have, you know, boys liking other boys and they're normalizing it. They're normalizing a girl liking another girl. They're normalizing it. And they're saying that a boy and a girl could be anything. If you feel like a boy, you're a boy. If you, if you feel like a girl, you're a girl. Understand? And they teach you things which are against teachings of Islam, which are against normal society. These are the same people who said a man cannot marry another man 20 years ago, 10 years ago, but now they're legalizing it, right? So these, yes, of course, haram, very good. But as Muslims, we're living in this country, we have to tolerate these things, but at the same time, we have to, we have to protect ourselves from those environments. Understand? So we want you to go to your parents and tell them that I want to be protected from the environment, but at the same time, I want to benefit myself both ways. Inshallah, after you graduate from this place, you will be able to go to college. No problem. I have two examples. I have two sisters, right? Both of my sisters did homeschooling. You know what? They didn't go to public school. But after they reached in the 9th, 10th grade, they took their tasks, they took their GD, and they took their SATs, and after that, after that, they went to college. No public school, they went to college, and one of my sisters was younger than me, she teaches in a public high school. You don't need to go to a public school, you don't need to go to a high school to be intellectual. You just need proper teachers, and you just need the subjects which need to be taught properly. That's it. And if you do good on the test, then inshallah you'll be able to go to a good college. Like I said, homeschooling students do better. 
видоски за гору. Томско. Yeah. It's so much more. Understand? And this is the month of Ramadan. Understand? This is the month to change yourself. You know how you have Black Friday and this sale and that sale, you have opportunities to get everything cheaper and nicer, right? What do you do for a month before, you, a week before you go to your parents? Daddy, I want PlayStation 4, it's so cheap, I want it, I want this game and that game, right? Same way the month of Ramadan is coming, right? This is the month to get the best out of everything. It gets the best deals. This is the month for the parents to change themselves. It's also the month to start off new. And inshallah, when the school, when the school starts off in September, I want inshallah all of you guys to be part of the system. And inshallah, when you guys grow up, you will be able to understand Islam, be able to, be able to preach Islam, and inshallah, you guys will be the ones who will represent Islam to everyone else. Inshallah, in this country. You guys all understand? You guys all make intention to be part of the Islam school? Yes or no? You guys all want to become hafid? Yes. You could become a hafid or also become a doctor. It doesn't matter. Yes, inshallah. ITV, call of peace, save humanity.